Hello. How is everybody? See how long it takes. It's a little bit of a lag between Zoom and Facebook. So let's just see how long it takes for everything to kick in. Good morning, Jan. How are you? All right, let's see, because we're going to make this somewhat quick so I can open up in less than an hour. We did these two blocks, which were our first two blocks last week for Make the Cut. And we are going to be working on blocks three and four. And I've already done a little bit of work on them just to kind of get us um, moving along a little bit faster. There's the block that we're going to be working on today for three. Hey, hi, I am here. I'm the, the wizard behind the screen, behind the, the, the curtain. Okay. Uh, let's go back to this. What I've done so far is we have to make half square triangles. Last week, I showed you how to do half square triangles, a traditional way where you put a diagonal line and you sew a quarter of an inch on either side of the line. And then you would cut halfway through. But when you have this wonderful so steady glide mat on your table, you don't, I mean, I still you do that for um, smaller blocks, but because these blocks are fairly big, it's really not necessary to draw the line. And I tend to go a lot faster when I don't. So basically what I'm doing is I have the quarter inch foot with the guide right here, and I'm putting the guide right on the intersection at the diagonal. And then I'm following the line on the mat where my quarter inch line is, which is right here, and making sure this diagonal corner follows that it helps if you read the machine. But as long as that diagonal quarter corner follows the quarter inch line, then you don't need to draw a line. It's just one less thing to do. And by the way, finally, hopefully Friday, I will have um, an additional bar going across overhead so that I can mount my other camera kind of like overhead and behind me a little bit to point this way. Um, I haven't found any other way to do it, but hopefully we'll cross your fingers that what I ordered will work. Okay, so back to this. My quarter inch foot with the guide, the guide is right on the diagonal and this corner down here is right on the quarter inch dash line on my mat. So as long as I keep that corner, and you can go as slow or as fast as you want, on the diagonal, and then as I get closer, making sure the guide hits the corner, okay? I don't even cut my thread. Normally, I would be chain stitching and putting a bunch of them through, but I've already done two. Just turned it around without even cutting the thread. I'm doing the other side of the corner. And let me know if you guys have any questions. Sorry that you know my hands in the way of the camera sometimes. Like I said, we're still this is work in progress trying to figure out the best way to show you everything with all the multiple cameras that I have. And once I cut it, and all I did is eyeball it down the center. It doesn't have to be exact. The whole idea of this, what I teach is how to get the best accuracy and how to put these together the quickest and the easiest without too much fuss or muss. Because let's face it, this is supposed to be fun. And if it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. 
And a lot of this is going to be repeat each week, so just ignore some of the repeat. I definitely use best press, especially when we do we are working on some of the smaller piecing, um, because it will stop stretching and it'll make things easier. For the most part, you're going to be sewing a quarter of an inch seam, but there are places where I get a skin quarter, and I will explain those to you as we. One of them is going to be in block four. And I'm sorry, I have not the first video on face on uh, YouTube yet, only because it's just been one thing after another. With everybody working from home, a lot more people working from home. Internet has been extremely slow. Uh, this past weekend, I actually went out and bought another hotspot just for the streaming part of the video. So I'm hoping that would speed things up a little bit. And here's another tip for you. And it's not necessarily a tip, it's just a matter of preferences. When you do house square triangles, you have dog ears. Most of the people and teachers and trainers will tell you to cut those dog ears off. I don't. Um, I don't find that they are in my way at all. Uh, if anything, I find that they help when I'm lining things up. And I'll show you a close up. By keeping the two dog ears, it's one more spot for me to line up and acts as an arrow on where I want everything to be sewn. What I mean by that is, if you're sewing these two pieces together, or let's see, if you're sewing these two pieces together here, okay, and you keep the dog ears, it gives you a little bit of extra um, bite. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it, other than sometimes when you get to the corner, in some of these machines, it wants to suck these little pieces into the bar, into the side plate by having that little bit of extra there it just gives me extra movement and it gives me if i was to connect these and i point or so towards this part right here it'll make everything line up perfectly and i'll show you more as we go on um but and it, it's just a matter of preferences it really is um It's not a right or wrong, it's just something else that I have done or do. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, because these are all neutrals, what I've already done so that it looks pretty much the same. Because these first few blocks are neutrals, it really doesn't matter. As long as you pick one neutral to be A, one neutral to be B, it's not gonna really matter. It's completely up to you. My neutrals are all pretty close, but when you, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. You might be able to in low, when it's lower. When you put them together or look at them at from a distance, they will make their own pattern. So as long as you keep that in mind, which one is A, which one's B, which one's C, and do that, you should be fine. And again, that is completely your choice too. All right, so we have our first block. See that? Okay. And all I'm gonna do is take them one row at a time. So I want these two seams to line up. There you go. And so I am going to chain piece. I find chain piecing to be not that it saves a ton of time, but it does save a little bit of time. Oh, hmm. 
I wonder why. Sorry, Jan. Oh, there it is. That helps. Tell you, sometimes this stuff is terrible. I'll go over what I did already again. Sorry, Jan. There's a ton of buttons and you're trying to get multiple systems to um, work together and it's not always easy. Okay, this is what I taught about, explained about the dog ears. I don't cut them. Um, I don't trim them for the most part. Once in a while, I may if I'm dealing with a lot of small pieces, but what I found that by keeping that little bit of extra fabric right there, sometimes when some your some machines, when you get close to a point, it wants to suck that point into the, the sewing plate. So I find that little bit of extra fabric really does help a lot. It also, in my opinion, helps with alignment. So if I was sewing these two together and pointed my needle at the end towards this V, it would line everything up on a 45. And I'll show, have more options of that um, as we go further on. It was my block. I just did my first two squares and I'm gonna chain piece. Um, it doesn't save a ton of time, but I find it's worth doing. Oh yeah, and here is the other one I told, I was saying before the video came back. This whole block is neutral and a lot of these first blocks are gonna be neutral fabrics. As long as you determine which is your A fabric, which is your B fabric, because it will create its own pattern even within the neutrals. By chain stitching, you don't break your, your thread and you just keep on stitching with a little bit of space in between the blocks. And I find some machines, um, if you don't have a, a leader and ender, meaning you don't have a uh, fabric going before the initial block and after the initial block, they have a tendency again of trying to suck into, suck the fabric into the plate. See this cute new little thing I've got here going? Look up, it's got a rotary blade in there. It's perfect for when you're chain piecing because and I'm gonna have these in the store soon too. Yeah, see how it's connected, just like a banner. Well, you use the blade and cut all those apart. All right, now I'm going to iron. The only thing that I would recommend with your ironing on a nest seams as much as possible is to make sure in this case every other seam on every other row is going in a different or um you can pick one fabric Kind of like in the block that we're doing right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, in this block right here, right? You can see it, no problem. We have a, just a solid fabric that's not a half square triangle. 
So I iron my seams towards that one, that fabric. So in this one, when I sew these together, that seam will go that way. So this seam will go this way. And this one is the only one that we don't have a solid fabric. So it's gonna go the opposite of this one. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to nest our seams. Oh, this one I ironed the wrong way. It's a small thing. So if you are just starting out and it's a lesson that you can learn now, it will help you much more in the future with aligning, uh, lining up your blocks and making your seams neater. By making your seams neater, everything will piece together easier. And when you get ready to quilt it on a long arm or on your domestic machine, um, oh crap, I had it right the first time. Um, when you get ready to quilt it and you don't have bulky seams, it just makes the quilting process go much easier. All right, that's better. What a crazy week it's been already and it's only Wednesday. Goodness gracious, I'm telling you. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, sew this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, and then iron the seams again. And again, I'm going to chain stitch. I actually went and picked up new glasses last night, or I should say cheaters, just so that I could see from doing all these neutrals um, and white on whites and things like that. It's very hard to see which side of the fabric is the right side. The thing, one of the big things that I like about this pattern is it's very it's it's fairly simple and it gives you the opportunity to learn a bunch of different blocks and by doing only two blocks a week it's not going to be overtaxing it's going to be something you can easily do working on other projects and if you miss one week it's not a big deal because it's only two blocks. 100 blocks in 50 weeks is very doable. How is uh, everybody's weekend last weekend or how is your week going so far? Mine has just been crazy busy. I was all over the place on Monday. Now, sticky seam, which means you're going to run the iron quickly over the seam first and fold it over. All that's going to do is you, if you're dealing with cotton threads and you're dealing with cotton fabrics, it's just going to heat the seam up a little bit and it makes the thread expand. So it will give you a crisper seam and then add the rest for us to it. It'll hold the seam. Um, let's see. All right. So this seam is going towards the outside. This one's going towards the outside. These seams are going into the middle, and these two seams are going towards the opposite outsides. What that is going to do. Now that we have got our rows, hopefully we'll be able to see this. So we've got the first top seam going that way and we've got the bottom seam going this way. What that's gonna allow us to do is nest our seams. And this is a great opportunity, this quilt, for you to get really, really good at aligning, lining up your seams. 
and you can actually feel it. It feels nice and flat. When it's not lined up correctly and they're overlapping, it will feel very, very bulky. What I do is, because I know I'm gonna start sewing from this end. So I will actually put my pin in on an angle. What that does is it grabs this bottom seam and it comes up on the top seam. And when I sew, it gives me the opportunity of stopping with my needle right in the seam before I pull this pin. Because sometimes just the idea and just the, the motion of pulling this pin will take these seams out of alignment. And yes, these, if you haven't seen them before, they are long, flat pins. The reason we use flat pins, or at least the reason that I teach with flat pins, is you don't have a little bubble right here, either coming up to the seam or after the seam to, again, take your, your um, fabric out of alignment. Plus they're longer. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, the longer pins work better. I lift my foot up when I go get to the seams just so that the foot does not make the seams fold over on each other. Stop with my needle down right on the stitched seam line before I take my pin out. You never want to sew over your pins, ever. Nine out of 10 times, if you sew over your pins, you'll probably be fine. But on that 10th time, there's too many things that can go wrong. Least of which is you break a needle, but you can damage your bobbin case. You can have that needle break and ricochet out towards your eyes. You can damage the inside of your sewing machine worse. Um, it's just not worth the trouble. That's all we did. And I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But I think that seam is pretty good. And you know what? Don't beat yourself up on these, okay? We're talking about small blocks and there are literally a hundred. Nobody is gonna notice if you have one or two seams not lined up. It's going to be the overall picture that they're looking at, okay? So have fun with it. There's one. Almost done with block three. Again, before I get to that seam, because I've got a piece of the seam wanting to come up this way because of the foot, lift up my foot, make sure the seam is down. The more, you, the neater you can get with your seams now, it's just something that sticks with you, you know, in the long run. And it really will help you later on. There are some patterns that you just, no matter what you do, the seams are just not going to be as neat as you'd like. Um, and there's certain parts on this quilt, I'll tell you right now, where my seams are not neat. Because there's just so many blocks that you have to, and so many seams to line up from row to row, that um, it just didn't work for me. And that's when I basically iron them into submission. And I'll even show you places where I did that. But the more you can try to be good with your seams, so you can see that. Look at how cool that is. Yes, you can see the background where the seam is ironed over, but see how nice and neat it, and it lines up. If 
you guys have questions, all you have to do is post them. And I will be happy to answer them. If I don't get to them during the video, I will. I promise I will answer them afterwards because not everybody watches the videos at the same time. And the directions tell you not to cut these blocks uh, before you sew them. But I will tell you, meaning they have to be a specific size. You want all the blocks to be somewhat consistent. There were some of the blocks that I trimmed up just tiny bit. That's why I have this ruler here, just to keep making sure that I am being somewhat consistent with my blocks. Not that it really matters, but. All right, hardest thing you're gonna have, believe it or not, in this whole quilt is making sure you know which block the order of them because yes, I've already had to rip out a few here and there because I sewed the rows in the wrong order. So hopefully you learned from my mistakes. Okay, this is block one. This is block two, this is block three. And I am just gonna put it right on right away. Now that I know what I'm doing that way, I don't mess anything up and get it in the wrong order. If you have some seams to line up from block to block, try to do that. On this one, there isn't any. So I'm just trying to make sure it goes through as flat. Make sure all the seams are nice and flat, and make sure the, block, the corners of the blocks line up. And I do recommend making sure you put all these blocks when you connect the block to the block. Use a quarter inch seam. So if you're not real consistent with your quarter inch seam yet, you will be by the time you're done. Block three. All right, now we're going to go to block four. And I've already started sewing some of it together just to save time. So I've got a lot more pieces. Just be consistent in what fabrics you're picking for which meaning. This is my fabric E. So it's my fabric E throughout the whole block. This is fabric F, which means it's gonna be fabric F through the whole block. Okay. All I did was sew these to the top and the bottom together. This is one of the places where I do recommend a scant quarter of an inch because there's a lot of seams and um, it can be off and it probably will be off a little bit. I found when sewing these smaller pieces together, um, if you don't use a scant quarter of an inch seam, you're liable to not have a big enough piece to fit together. And I will show you what I mean shortly. I hope everybody knows what a scant quarter of an inch is. Scant quarter of an inch is as it sounds. You're not going to do a complete quarter of an inch. You're just going to do a thread or two short of a seam. So instead of you're using a quarter inch foot with a guide, instead of putting the fabric right up against the guide, just a little bit before it.
Alright, let's see. Alright, so these two together. Sometimes it's easier to start from the middle of the block out. Other times that's not going to be possible. You just have to, you're going to learn how to look at the layout and figure out the easiest way to put it together. It, sometimes it takes time. Good morning, Rose. How are you? How's Massachusetts? Didn't it, didn't it snow yesterday? Or did it snow where you are? I know it snowed a little bit in Rhode Island. All right. Hmm. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to put these together. Hopefully, everybody's doing good and staying safe. This world has gone crazy, I swear. I'm just sewing the two small blocks on the other side together. Almost done with these two sides. I'm gonna start in the center. Sorry about that. If I don't see your comment, please don't worry. I will respond. I promise. It's just kind of hard to keep track of everything on here right now because I'm checking this, I'm checking the monitor, I'm checking this camera, making sure I can sew and check the computer. Just a little bit to watch. All right. Here we go. So we're not going to worry about these outside pieces that we've sewn already. Now we're going to sew these two blocks to the center block so that they will be the same size to sew this, these two uh, pieces of fabric to the center. I'm telling you, trying to find this Toscana. I'm using this happens to be Toscana, Northcott's Toscana, white on um, white fabric, and it's very difficult to see the right and wrong side. Now that I'm sewing with bigger pieces, I'm not using a scant quarter of an inch. I'm only I only used a scant quarter of an inch when I had all these little pieces. 
And that's gonna be especially important when you're doing the smaller half square triangles. And it doesn't matter on this one, whether we iron the seams out or in, um, I'm just gonna do iron them out because that's where they wanna go. All right, now we're going to uh, sew these two outside pieces onto the center and literally we're almost done. And if you cut these two size that they tell you to, this piece here might be slightly bigger depending on your seam allowance. It's not a perfect quilt. As far as I'm concerned, there are no perfect quilts. And part of this class, what I hope to teach you is to just go with it. Learn how to find it. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it freak you out. Just go with it. When you look at the, the, the whole quilt, nobody's gonna see those little things here or there. And if they do, I'm telling you right now, they are not your friend. So I would get rid of them quickly. Like I like to say in class, I teach the 2020 method. If you can look at it from 20 feet, 20 feet away, riding horseback going 20 miles an hour and you don't see anything wrong, guess what? There is nothing wrong. And you don't need that type of negative attitude in you, your life. This should all be fun. I can't, I mean, and I can keep saying it. So hopefully most of you will keep it eventually. But if you're not having fun doing this, then you're doing something wrong. But it's meant to be fun. All right. Hopefully you can see. See, it's about an eighth of an inch too big on each side. And I'm not even gonna trim that up. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna leave it just like that. Now, we're gonna sew these two sides to the center. And then we're gonna sew these two top and bottom. And our block is done, hard to believe. Bye giving us, by sewing these with a scant quarter of an inch, it makes it so that both, they will, they will match up as far as they're the right size top and bottom. I found that doing it with a, a quarter of an inch instead of a scant quarter of an inch, when you're piecing these small pieces together, it just, it shrunk it too much. And I suggest going slow over all of these seams to make sure they're laying flat when they go through. Pick up the foot when you need to. Hope you guys are enjoying this, I really do. If not, let me know. I mean, if enough people don't want me to do the videos, then I won't. It's simple. There are two seams on here that you can try and match up, but honestly, as long as, let's see, let's see if I can show the two seams. See the seams, you got one right there and one right here. 
But honestly, I mean, you can try and match them up. And if you don't, uh, I would not freak out in the least. This area is going to have so many seams on it on this block that it's really not going to be noticeable. But again, the one seam going one way, one seam going the other way, it makes it perfect for lining up. I think that's probably one of the hardest lessons or I should say the easiest lessons to learn for lining up, but it takes people, most people the longest to learn. But it is a fairly easy lesson. Once you learn how to line up your seams, the rest of it go, is easy. I know people get upset with me when I say it's easy, but most of this is easy. It really is, it's just, once you have someone show you how to do it, it's, the rest of it is, is a piece of cake. So again, I'm not gonna sew over my pin. I am only stopping with the needle down right on the stitched seam line before I take the pin out. That's why I, again, put my pins in on an angle opposite of where I'm starting. So the angle goes down here, not up. Because then the pins are in the wrong place and when you take them out, you're before the seam. Just because I've had them where you line it up perfectly and then just the action of taking the, the pin out is enough to mess up the seam. Okay. All I'm gonna do is iron these out and then we're gonna put the top on. Peekaboo, I see you. Anybody have any questions so far? And I highly, highly recommend using this brush, especially when you start getting into um, of the smaller piecing. Starts is really going to help you. It's only a starch alternative, but it's not a ton of starch. Just when I tell you, it makes life much easier. It's going to stop all of these seams and things from moving around on you. All right, check it out. You see this seam is lined up nice. So is this one. Can't get better than that. All right, now all we have to do is so this one, the bottom to, to the middle and the top to the middle. You have, again, two options for lining seams up. This one and this one. If this seam here is going that way, then unfortunately I iron this one going the same way. I'm just gonna go back to the machine, to the iron, iron that back. Same thing with that one. So I'm just gonna iron these two seams. Having this many small parts to stitch together, it's almost impossible for you to iron the seams correctly the first shot. When you're in stitching with bigger pieces, it's a little bit easier to look at one row and one block, you know, one row to each other and get the right um the right seams go get the seams going the right way. All right, so again, a lot of this is just gonna be repeating over and over again, it's the same thing. So we've got this top seam going that way, the bottom seam is going this way. What that does, it's called nesting, it will get both of those seams locked together. I'm gonna go pin in, and down on an angle. All I'm doing is grabbing the bottom seam, and when I come up over here, I'm grabbing the top seam. That's just gonna help keep everything exactly where I want it, and by doing the pin on an angle, I can sew right up to this stitch line and stop 
with the needle down before I pull the pin out. I'm just going to line this seam up. I can tell it's not good. Just, just a bit. There we go. And you can feel it. You don't know when it's not lined up. And everybody's different sewing machine, but with a brother and a baby lock, I highly recommend um, back stitching at the beginning and at the end. For some reason, their stitches at the beginning and the end are not super tight. And if you're putting a large quilt together, like this one, not that this one's a huge quilt, but there's a lot of piecing and it's going to take you a while. Um, I've had to go, even with sometimes, if I forget the back stitching, I've had to go and put additional stitching in here because they start to come apart before I can put the pieces together. Okay, that's one. I'm going to do this one. And then we'll be done for this week. Just in time for me to open. I will give you a heads up. I may have to move this time like a half hour earlier just because um, it starts to cut a little close to opening at 10 o'clock. But I will give you as much advance notice as possible. All right, this is our final sewing for this week. Other than putting the block on our existing road. With all of this piecing, you see this little bit of a gap? Don't freak out, okay? It will work itself out once you straighten the bottom. There is a lot of stitching with those little piecing, and it has a tendency to want to pull taut or pull, you know, scrunch together. Once you actually just give it a little bit of tug, and I'm not saying we're going to pull it for all it's worth, just a little bit of a tug. Oh, sorry, the stitching, the pieces, the fabric want to go underneath my mat for some reason today. Once you give it just a little bit of a tug, there's plenty of give there because of all of that stitching. It will go together perfectly. And there is no bubble there or anything. So I'm just gonna iron this real quick and then we're gonna get do the final part and sew it to the rest of our row. Now, before I iron this, I kind, I try very hard to make sure that wherever I have the opportunity to line it up, the seams are going the right way. They are. You should have opportunities on almost all the blocks to line them up. You're going to get a lot of experience on aligning block, aligning seam length. All right. There it is. Now, 
I should be able to use this seam and this seam to line the blocks up. Let's see, maybe. One. It's not the end of the world if you don't get them lined up. It's just one more experience and two, it's satisfaction. But if you're off, nobody is going to notice. So don't freak out. I think it's time to take my guide mat off and wipe it down and then put it back on so the fabric doesn't want to go underneath which happens sometimes it'll get a little bit dirty or unstuck or fabric will get string thread will get stuck to it so you just have to take this mat off wipe it down with an unscented baby wipe let it dry and then it's ready to be stuck down again stitch and we're done for the week Woohoo! week two not bad did i line it up perfectly no but i'm okay with it oops there you go might be a little hard to tell i think so because it's white that's on my list of things to do this week it's fine Someone that can help you with the lighting because it's pain in the butt. All right. Hopefully, if I bring this closer, you can see. Okay. Oops. Not too bad. These are the two blocks that we did today. All right, everybody. There's 10 blocks per row and there's 10 rows, which equal 100 blocks. So I just kept sewing them together until I get 10. If you don't wanna sew the rows together, you don't have to, you can wait till you have them all done and make sure all your connecting seams go in the right direction. But I'm gonna show you what, how I did it and take it from there. If you guys don't have any questions, I'm gonna call it good for today and go and open the door, start the day. If you have any questions, you can feel free to, um, post them here. We've got um, camera bells fill in the blank for February going out this week. Uh, we've got Kimber Bell's kitchen starting on the 7th and the 8th for that event, which is going to be a lot of fun if you missed the first one. Um, I have all the kits here. Thanks, Kathy. Have a great day. And they are going out this, some of them went out last week, the rest of them going out this week. But I still have plenty of kits. So if you would like to join us for Kimberbell's Kitchen, go on the website and sign up there. It's a great class and an event, and you can do it from your home and you don't have to move your embroidery machine anywhere. The cost of the class gets you the kit, which includes all of the fabric and embellishment for the class, for all the projects. Um, Let's see. Oh, yesterday we got some baby odor fabric in. I don't know how long it's gonna last this time, but it's not as cute as, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's not as cute as the original fabric, but I can't get the original one anymore. Um, I honestly forget what else we have coming in. There's just so much. Uh, Jurassic, which is the other big dinosaur one is shipped i think it's shipped monday i think so but i haven't seen i don't think i've seen a, a invoice yet so i can't tell you exactly when it's coming in but i will let you know as soon as i know all right everybody have a great day i'm going to start my day talk to you later